So in this video, we're going to be talking about the origin story for ancient Italy. The first thing to notice about Italy is, once again, you start with the geography and think about how this is going to affect the people that live there and the civilizations that develop there. Uh, so one of the things that you notice is, first of all, uh, that Italy is, uh, is further to the west than all of the other civilizations that we've looked at so far. Uh, and, uh, you know, it has, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's far on the outskirts of the, you know, what the ancients would have thought of as the civilized world. The, um, the key geographic figure, features uh, surrounded by water, um, that, it is, uh, uh, that it is part of the, the, uh, uh, the encirclement of Western Mediterranean. The uh, Western Mediterranean is sort of defined by the Italian peninsula, the island of Sicily, and the, uh, the peninsula that stretches out from Africa that, uh, on which Carthage is situated. And so the third thing to notice is that in terms of the landmass of Europe, Italy is separated from it by a very significant mountain range, the Alps. Um, and so uh, Italy ends up being sort of uh, uh, capable of developing on its own in sort of isolation from the rest of Europe. And then finally, uh, it has uh, this, uh, this backbone this, uh, this, this smaller mountain range that runs along the, uh, the center of the peninsula from north to south, uh, the Apennines. And uh, this has a, a, a key impact on the story of Italy in two ways. One is it creates a, a semi-sheltered uh, land of plains along the western coast. Uh, this is known as the Tyrrhenian Sea. And uh, so this means that the, the western coast of Italy uh, is going to be, uh, to a certain extent, uh, connected together. The peoples that develop along there will be interacting with each other along the coastline uh, over the course of, of ancient history, and particularly in the, in the earliest periods of developments of the, the civilizations that we're going to be talking about. And then the second thing about the Apennines is that uh, some of the peoples that develop in Italy settle along the uh, the Apennines and, uh, be and become the hill peoples, the peoples that are characterized by the way in which they they live in the the hills of the uh, Apennines and develop a lifestyle that is in accordance with this. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. So the uh, the 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 figure of the geography of Italy, um, the, the settlement begins with the Etruscans. Uh, the Etruscans, once again, a, a, a one of these autochthonous civilizations like uh, the Minoans, uh, to a certain extent like the Sumerians that are you know, there at the beginning, whose language is unrelated to anyone else, uh, uh, you know, whose, whose origin stories are lost in the midst of time. And then we have uh, at, at the beginning of the Iron Age, the arrival of the Indo-Europeans from the north. Uh, the, they travel in large groups across the Alps over the period of, of a century or so uh, and, uh, and settle into Italy in sort of two groups. Uh, one is the hill peoples that I mentioned, and these are Indo-Europeans that, because they're settling in these, this mountainous area, uh, they maintain their Indo-European heritage. They remain decentralized, non-urban, and pastoral. The, uh, the other Indo-Europeans that settle in Italy are the, uh, the Latins who uh, carry on past the Apennines and settle along the coast and become uh, connected with and influenced by the Etruscans. The most important city of the Latins will be the city of Rome. And then at roughly the same time, we have the settlement in the south of, uh, of the Greek colonists in Magna Graecia, in the, uh, the boot of Italy uh, and, uh, the, uh, and in Sicily. Uh, 
So this is the thing that, that Italy is made up of all of these different kinds of peoples. Uh, there's there's never uh, a a unified sense of there being an Italy in terms of peoples or nationality, or especially in terms of language. Even today, the the country of Italy is. Uh, to a very large extent, an artificial construct that unites together a number of different peoples that live on the same peninsula and have a certain amount of shared history, but uh, you know who are uh, who have their own heritage and and, and origins. The Etruscans, uh, once again, the earliest of these people, uh, the Etruscans develop a a very successful urban wealthy civilization. So once again, uh, there's some parallels here with the Minoans. Uh, uh, the, the Etruscans have uh, a, a fairly relaxed civilization from what we can understand. Uh, this is a, a grouping, a, a city-state culture. So this is, this is a few dozen Etruscan cities, each of which share uh, cultural heritage, share language, share religion but are independent from each other and in rivalry with each other. So a classic example of the, the, the city-state model. Uh, each Etruscan city is fiercely independent, has its own patron deity, uh, and uh, it, it, its own uh, sense of, 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 of patriotism and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, um, its own idea of, of who they are. Uh, the Etruscans uh, are relatively wealthy. They uh, they have uh, some success in, in industrial production, and in, uh, uh, in they have uh, fertile lands that allow them to be successful uh, in having a strong agricultural base as well as uh, good manufacturing and and, uh, and skilled labor. And uh, they undertake a great deal of commerce. They're wealthy enough to be able to. Uh, patronize the traders that move into the Western Mediterranean, and there's two groups of these: the uh, the Phoenician traders and uh, the Greeks from Magna Graecia to the south. And so the the you know and so amongst the Etruscans we have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, examples of trade goods that are not only local but that are purchased from these outsiders. And this has a certain amount of influence. Uh, uh, Etruscan, you know, ceramics decoration, for example, is very much influenced by the Greeks. And the Etruscans acquire a writing system from the Phoenicians. And, uh, you know, this writing system is, is the ancestor of the, the writing system of the Latins. Uh, to the south is Latium. Uh, uh, whereas the, the Etruscans are spread out over all of what is now Tuscany, Latium is a fairly confined space. Uh, you know, there's a relatively narrow area just to the south of the Tiber River that, you know, is, uh, is, is where the Latins choose to settle. And so the, the, the Latin cities are much more closely connected to each other. There's still a city-state culture. And so um, they still uh, share their own, uh, you know, Indo-European heritage and customs and uh, and, and religion. Uh, they still share the, the Latin language. They are still in rivalry with each other, with their own patron deities. But because they are more closely connected, because they're sort of surrounded by all of these other people, especially the very foreign Etruscans to the north, um, they are a little bit more in interdependent and uh, more inclined to uh, share, you know, uh, you know, uh, certain things in common. For example, the the joint celebration of certain festivals uh, amongst the cities at a shared shrine. These kinds of things uh, make the, the the community of Latium very tightly bound for a city-state culture. Uh, the uh, you know the, the the Latins as newcomers to Italy are very heavily influenced by the Etruscans to the north that provide an example for uh, the the way cities work the way economies work um, and uh, and the, the Latins pattern themselves on the Etruscans to a certain extent 
uh, in ways that have uh, that have very long lasting impact but they also do so in a in a way that is characteristic of themselves so in other words uh, you know they 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 don't simply assimilate into the Etruscan culture. Quite to the contrary, they adopt Etruscan mannerisms and make them Latin. And so, for example, uh, we have the uh, the amongst the Etruscans. There's a practice of whenever the king leads a a, a, a an army into war and has a uh, and has a success, the uh, the, the the king. Goes uh, conducts a, a procession through the city that you know is is you know very stylized and has a certain amount of, of ritual to it that is a celebration of what the uh, the king has won for the Etruscan city in battle. Uh, this is uh, the this is carried over. This is picked up by the Latins in what uh, is known as the triumph. And uh, but amongst the the Latins and amongst the Romans in particular, uh, the triumph is adopted as a means of of of, uh, of of sort of confining the immense amount of glory to one day. This is this is important to uh, ensuring that the kings be, don't become too powerful, and it's even more important once the Romans get rid of their kings. And uh, the triumphs are being conducted by uh, consuls, by the, uh, the, the elected leaders of the Romans. It's vitally important to the Romans to ensure um, that uh, one particular individual does not have too much uh, influence over them. And so the triumph is a means of, of having this procession in which you are able to uh, you know, bathe in glory for a day. And then you go home and you take off your triumphal robe uh, and uh, and become a uh, a part of the larger Roman community again. Uh, uh, another way in which the Etruscans have heavy influence on the Romans is Etruscan religion. Uh, the uh, the key element of Etruscan religion is that nothing can be accomplished by the state without first being approved by the gods. This is absolutely crucial to understanding the Romans, because when the Romans pick this up, it becomes a, a absolutely uh, essential element of the Roman state. The Roman state, the actions of the Roman state, are completely contingent on whether the, the actions have been approved by the gods in advance. And so uh, this carries over to major actions and, and minor actions. This carries over not only to the conduct of war and uh, you know, the, the target of war uh, and, and whether peace is being made, but uh, also to domestic affairs like uh, taxes and uh, laws in general and the election of officials and their, uh, uh, their installation in office. And so before each, you know, important action of the Roman state, the gods first must be consulted. Um, in the Etruscan religion, this is done by uh, the practice of haruspicia, in which a animal is sacrificed, a goat or a sheep or, or sometimes an ox, and the, the liver of this animal is inspected by the, the haruspix, the, uh, the, the priest whose job it is to consult the gods. And so what we're looking at here is a diagram uh, of, a, of a liver that is marked according to the, the, the gods and, and minor deities that are associated with particular... So if, you know, the, the, the ritual is conducted in terms of whether a war is to take place or some other decision, uh, and the sacrifice takes place and there is a blemish on the liver of the sacrificed animal, uh, this is an indication that the gods are uh, upset or concerned and must be propitiated before further action can be taken. Uh, this carries over directly into the Roman system and uh, the, the practice of consulting the gods becomes a necessary component. However, the Romans uh, developed their own means of doing so. Uh, the, the, the consultation of the liver and, uh, and so forth is still uh, one of the possibilities uh, reserved for uh, you know, particularly important occasions or uh, certain uh, 
rituals that uh, go back very far in time, but uh, the, the primary means of consulting the gods is through uh, taking the auspices, uh, through what is known as augury. Augury involves uh, a, a vigil of watching the skies for signs from the gods. And this can be, uh, there's, there's a whole laundry list of ways in which the gods can manifest their will uh, in the sky using the movement of birds uh, and uh, you know, natural phenomena of the sky and so forth and so on. But the, the, the upshot of this is that the, the augurs must be consulted, must demonstrate the, uh, that, they, they have, uh, uh, that they have acquired the approval of the gods before a law can be passed a person can be installed in office, a war can, uh, can begin or end. Uh, this is one of the reasons why, even today, installation of an elected official in office is referred to as an inauguration. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, uh, you might uh, consider the, the implications of this. What are the implications of this? This means that, uh, that the, the state religion is, a, is thoroughly politicized. It becomes part of the state, and the people that have control over the religion are politically powerful. And we'll come back to the implications of this shortly. And we'll continue talking about this in the next video. The peoples that I mentioned, and these are Indo-Europeans that, because they're settling in these, this mountainous area, uh, they maintain their Indo-European heritage. They remain decentralized, non-urban, and pastoral. The, uh, the other Indo-Europeans that settle in Italy are the, uh, the Latins, who uh, carry on past the Apennines and settle along the coast and become uh, connected with and influenced by the Etruscans. The most important city of the Latins will be the city of Rome. And then at roughly the same time, we have the settlement in the south of, uh, of the Greek colonists in Magna Graecia, in the, uh, the boot of Italy uh, and, uh, the, uh, and in Sicily. So this is the thing, that, that Italy is made up of all of these different kinds of peoples. Uh, there's, there's never a, a, a unified sense of there being in Italy in terms of peoples or nationality or especially in terms of language. Even today, the, the country of Italy is, uh, to a very large extent, an artificial construct that unites together a number of different peoples that live on the same peninsula and have a certain amount of shared history, but, uh, you know, who are, uh, who have their own heritage and, and, and origins. The Etruscans, uh, once again, the earliest of these people, uh, the Etruscans develop a, a very successful, urban, wealthy civilization. So once again, uh, there's some parallels here with the Minoans. Uh, uh, the, the Etruscans have uh, a, a fairly relaxed civilization from what we can understand. Uh, this is a, a grouping, a, a city-state culture. So this is, this is a, a few dozen Etruscan cities, each of which share uh, cultural heritage, share language, share religion, but are independent from each other and in rivalry with each other. So a classic example of the, the, the city-state model. Uh, each Etruscan city is fiercely independent, has its own patron deity, uh, and uh, it, it, its own uh, uh, sense of, 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 of patriotism and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, um, its own idea of, of who they are. Uh, the Etruscans uh, are relatively wealthy. They, uh, they have uh, some success in, in industrial production, and in, uh, uh, in, they have uh, fertile lands that allow them to be successful uh, in having a strong agricultural base as well as uh, good manufacturing and, and, uh, be, and become the hill peoples, the peoples that are characterized by the way in which they, they live in the, the hills of the uh, Apennines and develop a lifestyle that is in accordance with this. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. So the, uh, the, the, the figure of the geography of Italy, um, 
the, the settlement begins with the Etruscans. Uh, the Etruscans, once again, a, a, a one of these autochthonous civilizations like uh, the Minoans, uh, to a certain extent like the Sumerians, that are you know, there at the beginning, whose language is unrelated to anyone else, uh, uh, you know, whose, whose origin stories are lost in the midst of time. And then we have, uh, at, at the beginning of the Iron Age, the arrival of the Indo-Europeans from the north. Uh, the, they travel in large groups across the Alps, over the period of, of a century or so, uh, and uh, and settle into Italy in sort of two groups. Uh, one is the hill peoples that I mentioned, and these are Indo-Europeans that, because they're settling in these this mountainous area, uh, they maintain their Indo-European heritage. They remain decentralized, non-urban, and pastoral. The, uh, the other Indo-Europeans that settle in Italy are the, uh, the Latins who uh, carry on past the Apennines and settle along the coast and become uh, connected with and influenced by the Etruscans. Uh, the most important city of the Latins will be the city of Rome. And then at roughly the same time, we have the settlement in the south of, uh, of the Greek colonists in Magna Graecia in the uh, the boot of Italy uh, and uh, the uh, and in Sicily. So this is the thing that, that Italy is made up of all of these different kinds of peoples. Uh, there's there's never a, a a unified sense of there being an Italy in terms of peoples or nationality or especially in terms of language. Even today, the the country of Italy is. Uh, to a very large extent, an artificial construct that unites together a number of different peoples that live on the same peninsula and have a certain amount of shared history, but uh, you know who are uh, who have their own heritage and and, and origins. The Etruscans, uh, once again, the earliest of these people, uh, the Etruscans develop a a very successful urban wealthy civilization. So once again, uh, there's some parallels here with the Minoans' plains along the western coast. Uh, this is known as the Tyrrhenian Sea. And uh, so this means that the, the western coast of Italy uh, is going to be, uh, to a certain extent, uh, connected together. The peoples that develop along there will be interacting with each other along the coastline. Uh, over the course of, of ancient history, and particularly in the in the earliest periods of developments of the the civilizations that we're going to be talking about, and then the second thing about the Apennines is that uh, some of the peoples that develop in Italy settle along the uh, the Apennines and uh, be, and become the hill peoples, the peoples that are characterized by the way in which they they live in the the hills of the uh, Apennines and develop a lifestyle that is in accordance with this, uh, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. So the uh, the 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 figure of the geography of Italy, um, the the settlement begins with the Etruscans. Uh, the Etruscans once again a a, a one of these autochthonous civilizations like. Uh, the Minoans, uh, to a certain extent, like the Sumerians, that are, you know, there at the beginning, whose language is unrelated to anyone else, uh, uh, you know, whose whose origin stories are lost in the midst of time, and then we have, uh, at, at the beginning of the Iron Age, the arrival of the Indo-Europeans from the north. Uh, the they travel in large groups across the Alps over the period of, of a century or so, uh, and, uh, and settle into Italy in sort of two groups. Uh, one is the hill peoples that I mentioned, and these are Indo-Europeans that, because they're settling in these, this mountainous area, uh, they maintain their Indo-European heritage. They remain decentralized, non-urban, and pastoral. 
the uh, the other Indo-Europeans that settle in Italy are the uh, the Latins who uh, carry on past the Apennines and settle along the coast and become uh, connected with and influenced by the Etruscans. Uh, the most important city of the Latins will be the city of Rome. And then at roughly the same time, we have the settlement in the south of, uh, of the Greek colonists in Magna Graecia, in the, uh, the boot of Italy uh, and, uh, the, uh, and in Sicily. So this is the thing, that, that Italy is made up of all of these different kinds of peoples. Uh, there's, there's never uh, a, a, the, uh, the Phoenician traders and uh, the Greeks from Magna Graecia to the south. And so the the you know and so amongst the Etruscans we have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, examples of trade goods that are not only local but that are purchased from these outsiders, and this has a certain amount of influence. Uh, uh, Etruscan you know ceramics decoration, for example, is very much influenced by the Greeks, and the Etruscans acquire a writing system from the Phoenicians. And, uh, you know, this writing system is, is the ancestor of the, the writing system of the Latins. Uh, to the south is Latium, uh, uh, whereas the, the Etruscans are spread out over all of what is now Tuscany, Latium is a fairly confined space. Uh, you know, there's a relatively narrow area just to the south of the Tiber River that, you know, is, uh, is is where the Latins choose to settle, and so the, the, the Latin cities are much more closely connected to each other. There's still a city-state culture, and so um, they still uh, share their own, uh, you know, Indo-European uh, heritage and customs and, uh, and, and religion. Uh, they still share the, the Latin language. They are still in rivalry with each other, with their own patron deities, but because they are more closely connected, because they're sort of surrounded by all of these other people, especially the very foreign Etruscans to the north, um, they are a little bit more inter interdependent and uh, more inclined to uh, share, you know, uh, you know, uh, certain things in common. For example, the, the joint celebration of certain festivals uh, amongst the cities at a shared shrine, these kinds of things, uh, make the, the, the community of Latium very tightly bound for a city-state culture. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the Latins as newcomers to Italy are very heavily influenced by the Etruscans to the north that provide an example for uh, the, the way cities work, the way economies work, um, and, uh, and the, the Latins pattern themselves on the Etruscans to a certain extent uh, in ways that have, uh, that have very long-lasting impact, but they also do so in a, in a way that is characteristic of themselves. So in other words, uh, you know, they, 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 they don't simply assimilate into the Etruscan culture. Quite to the contrary, they adopt Etruscan mannerisms and make them Latin. 